G'day mates, if you only watch one of my YouTube videos in your entire life, I sure as hell hope it's this one because today I'll show you which automatic CPAP machine is the best. And by best, I mean which provides the most efficient automatic pressure delivery for optimal treatment. And no, it's not ResMed. Hmm, now just a heads up, she's quite a lengthy video. So perhaps give your thumb a little bit of a rest from scrolling through the half naked girls on TikTok. Sit back, get comfy, strap yourselves in and enjoy the ride. All right, let's do this. Now for the CPAP newbies, joining us on the channel for the very first time, fresh meat for the slaughter. G'day mates, warm welcome. Automatic CPAP machines, they monitor your airflow, your breathing, and then they regulate the therapy pressure delivery up or down accordingly. And the goal, which I hope we can all agree on, is efficient pressure delivery for optimal breathing and gas exchange. That's what it's all about. That's it in a nutshell. Efficiency, so important, hey, we want the best possible breathing at the lowest pressure delivery. Now today's video focuses on ResMed funded researchers from the University of Barcelona. Now these guys developed a novel way to bench test various automatic CPAP machines with a computer driven model that can replicate any breathing pattern. Think of it like hooking your CPAP machine up to a robot and we can tell that robot exactly how to breathe. Robot, obstructive apnea. Robot, hypopnea. Robot, normal breathing. And then we can hook these CPAP machines up to the same robot, provide them with the exact same breathing patterns and see how they perform. That's the bench test and the results are incredible. And what's even more incredible? These researchers are funded by ResMed. Now this bench test chart is fundamental to your understanding of this video. So I'll quickly explain. Just imagine your CPAP machine is a student about to undertake their final exam. Now this chart here is the exam answer. Now to get an A on the exam, the automatic pressure delivery should closely mirror the blue line here. Because the blue line is the pressure required for normal breathing on the test. Now if the pressure delivery is below the blue line but above the red line, then you get a B on the exam because you treated the obstructive apneas, but you failed to reach full breathing normalization. There still might be some hypopneas or some airflow limitation, etc. And below the red line, you failed the exam. Don't worry if you don't fully understand it just yet, as it will make more sense later in the video when we start adding in the pressure trace from the various CPAP machines we'll take a look at. Now remember this precise computer driven model can replicate any breathing pattern we like. Well, let's run through the breathing pattern simulations that were provided throughout the test, starting with A, this little section right here, which is designed to represent sleep onset, 45 minutes in duration, AHI zero, 16 breaths per minute, tighter volume with 500 mils, very normal breathing. They did throw in a few little booby traps here, which is swallowing, and also some small changes in the tidal volume, the, you know, the amount of air flow into the lungs, um, which is normal when you're falling asleep at the beginning of the night. So that's what this line represents here. And because it is normal breathing, we want the automatic pressure to closely mirror this line. There really is no need for that automatic pressure to be going above the blue line because breathing's normal. Let's go to this section here, which is B. So after our first 45 minutes of sleep onset, we finally drift off to sleep and we enter our first NREM cycle here with B and it runs for 60 minutes. And over here is the breathing simulation. So apneas, zero to five centimeters, event length, 12 seconds. So this is the computer driven model. 
sending the CPAP machine apneas when the pressure delivery is below five, yeah? Zero to five centimeters, it will send 12 second apneas to the machine to see how it responds. Once the machine goes above five, it will then send hypopneas, 16 seconds in length. Once it goes above seven, it will send airflow limitation. And once it goes above nine, normal breathing pattern. That's how it's doing its simulation, yeah? So you can see here with the lines, with the red line, we said before, uh, if it's above the red line, we know that obstructive apneas have been controlled. And if we look up here, obstructive apneas are between zero to five centimeters. We know that once it hits the blue line, normal breathing. Now the blue line here is at nine, normal breathing, nine centimeters. You're starting to understand it? We'll get there, guys. Okay, enough of all that boring stuff. Let's get to the results. Starting with what is undoubtedly the best selling CPAP machine of all time, the gold standard, the ResMed AirSense 10, old mate. So you can see now on the chart, we have this gray line. And this gray line is the pressure delivery over time from the AirSense 10 machine. This is the pressure trace. This is what the machine was delivering in response to the breathing simulation we just talked about a minute ago. Now remember, the first 45 minutes here is wake. We're not asleep yet. It's just regular normal breathing. A couple of little booby traps in there, you know, the swallowing, subtle changes in tidal volume. But ideally, the CPAP pressure trace should closely mirror this blue line here at four centimeters because we're not even asleep yet. But if you look at the ResMed trace here, you can see it's bumping up, bumping up, bumping up. It goes up to around, I don't know, six and a half, seven centimeters here, which in my opinion is still a pass, okay? That's not too bad. But it's once the simulation hits sleep where things go really pear-shaped. Now remember, to ace the exam, the pressure trace, this gray line, should closely mirror the blue line as much as possible because the blue line is where we have normal breathing. That's when breathing becomes normal. We don't need anything above that mark. But look at the ResMed pressure delivery. It's miles above what is required for normal breathing, yeah? So the computer-driven model is showing the ResMed machine regular breathing, but the ResMed machine is still going up, 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 and then it goes too high, it realizes it's gone too high, and then it starts to come down again. It looks like the Himalayas here. Now, remember what I said earlier, yeah? It's, it's about efficient pressure delivery. The best breathing at the lowest pressure delivery. ResMed machine's not even close. Yes, you're gonna get an excellent AHI on paper, and you can see that here. Residual AHI, only 0.7. Brilliant. All right, and that's what all the doctors focus on, that's what all the clinicians focus on. They don't focus on comfort. Great results, look at your apnea hypopnea index, and it shows it there. But at what cost, guys? What cost? If apnea was a walnut, the ResMed here is a sledgehammer. <laughs> sure, you broke the shell, but you smashed the nut in the process, okay? And by smashing the nut, I mean you're causing non-compliance. Um, so if Uncle Nico is grading this exam, I'm sorry, but that's a fail for me. The number one reason why 50% of people fail or give up on CPAP therapy is too much pressure, especially for beginners. When they're just starting out, they're not used to it, guys. And you just blast them, blast them right in the face with the Himalayas, with the sledgehammer. And if there's any clinicians watching, sleep techs, CPAP consultants, whoever you are, doctors, doctors, specialists, sending your patients home with a ResMed Auto Set 4 to 20 is the worst thing you can do for your patient compliance. It is criminal, and you all do it. You get them in, you send them off four to 20, you get the good AHI and you give it a tick. No good, all right? You need to put a leash on that motherfucker, you need to pull up the handbrake and you need to tighten that range to stop the Himalayan mountains, all right? It does not closely mirror the blue line. I see it all the time in Sleep HQ, that's all I'm doing, just dropping pressures down, getting 10 times better results. You guys need to learn to do that as well because you put far too much trust in this algorithm. And personally, it, it's too aggressive. It's not accurate. 
Moving on. Here's just a few of the many problems that extra 30, 40% pressure will cause your patients. Mask leaks, tick. Mouth leak, tick. Dry nose, throat and mouth, tick. Difficulty breathing, exhaling against the pressure, tick. Sleep disturbance, that's a big one. Tick, aerophasia, tick. Treatment emergent central sleep apnea, the pressure itself causing central sleep apnea, tick, taking your mask off in your sleep, tick. I could keep ticking for days, and these are the exact reasons why people fail and they give up because too much pressure is a royal pain in the ass. 50% comfort, 50% control efficiency. Let me show you a real world example of this. All right, so check it out David's profile again. <laughs> G'day Dave. I'm gonna have to start paying him commission soon. Uh, Monday, January 9th, 2023. He's got an AirSense 10 in APAP mode, auto set mode. And his minimum pressure level is 12, and his max level is 20. And if we scroll down, here's the pressure trace. This is the automatic algorithm changing the pressure over time. We've got time along the x-axis here and the pressure up the y-axis. And you can see the pressure is going up quite high. 17.86, 17.46, 18.76, and right up here, 19.52. It's nearly capping out at the max pressure of 20. He's got exceptional leak rates. And for those wondering, he's using a Fisher & Paykel Avora full face mask. And it's doing an excellent job at a very high pressure level. So on this particular night, his median pressure delivery was 14.34. 95% of the night it was 18.16 and below, and his apnea hypopnea index 5.09. Now let's move forward, and he changes his therapy mode from automatic to fixed pressure. And based on these results, most of you and most of the clinicians watching in the sleep techs will be looking at these median pressure deliveries and the 95th percentile pressure, and they'd be going, okay, David needs somewhere around the 14 and a half, 15, 16 pressure level if he wanted to change to a fixed pressure CPAP because they think that this automatic pressure delivery is providing just enough pressure to normalize his breathing. But check this out. Boom. Oh, <laughs> wrong one. Here we are. Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, you can see now he's in CPAP mode. His pressure is set to 11. Apnea hypopnea index, 4.02. All right, his breathing is super lovely. Be beautiful. Let's have a look at his flow limitation. He's got very, very little flow limitation. We'll go back and check out the flow limitation on the, when he was in automatic, just so you can see. There's the flow limitation chart when he, was, when he was in automatic mode, fair bit of flow limitation. Flow limitation has improved. He's got a lower AHI and a pressure delivery of 11. That's a long way from 19.5. You can just imagine how many people like David, have been set up on four to 20, sent away, the machine's pumping them full of 19 centimeters and they go, no, too hard, it's not worth it. I can't deal with this therapy, it's a pain in my ass. When they could be getting better treatment, these results are better. Had a pressure of 11, nearly half, just insane. All right, mates, moving on to the second bench test CPAP machine, and it's another AirSense 10, but this time the for her version, the lady version, with the lavender screen and the pretty leaves. And it's very similar, but there's a few small differences, and I'll point them out. In the beginning here, the wake period, it's done a better job at staying low. But once we fall asleep again, we still get these great big peaks in the pressure, well above the blue line, 
but they're not quite as large as the standard auto set there. Pressure max here was 15.4. What was it with the AirSense 10 again? 18 point something, I can't remember. CFAM Dreamstar Auto. Now, I have no experience with the Dreamstar. However, I do have a CFAM S-Box. I believe they're a French company. And I'm pretty sure the algorithm is pretty much the same. It's not a great algorithm, guys. They do an exceptionally good job in the beginning though, I must say. See the wake period, how the pressure hasn't moved. So they're very good at telling when you're awake, but once you went to sleep, the pressure, you can see here, it's just not reaching breathing normalization. It's gotta get up here to the blue line. It's just controlling the obstructive apneas okay, although even then sometimes it's below the red line here, so it's not even controlling the obstructive apneas. So, and a bit too slow to respond there as well. So you can see here, overcome obstructive events, no. Overcome flow limitation, no. And the residual AHI, 16.5. So we'll give that one a fail. Moving on. Next up, we have the Fisher & Paykel Icon. Hmm. Now, some of you might be thinking, Nick, these are old CPAP machine models. Have there been updates? What about the AirSense 11, the new sleep style? Have the algorithms changed? No, <laughs> short answer. Uh, now this one's looking pretty good, guys, except for this part in the beginning here where I'm awake. <laughs> I've got normal breathing. I haven't even fallen asleep yet, but look at the pressure. It's off to the races. It's up here at 14 centimeters. So not sure what's going on there. They do have a feature called sense awake, but for some reason, maybe it's turned off. Sense awake might be turned off, but it quickly comes back down and then it is closer to the blue line. You can see here, it's more of a mirror of the blue line, just above the blue line for most of the night. A few little peaks here. So once old mate robot falls asleep, it's doing a pretty damn good job, guys. All right, if we come down here, residual AHI 0.6, overcome of obstructive events, yes. Overcome flow limitation, yes. And the APAP pressure after 45 minutes of simulated wake was 11.2. 14.5 with sense awake off, there you go. So they had sense awake on and sense awake off. They tested both and it was up there at 14.5 with sense awake off. So that tells me that you guys using Fisher & Paykel gear, make sure you set up a damn good ramp period for your device. Don't just leave it in automatic there, okay? You want 30 minute ramp period. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next on the list, the BMC ReSmart. And this is an interesting one. Now, beginning of the night, it's doing okay, similar to the ResMed during the wake period. So getting up here sort of six-ish. And then during sleep, most of the time, it's between the red and the blue. There's a few little spots here where it's below the red and here. So not controlling obstructive apnea. And a few little spots here where it reaches the blue, normalizing the breathing. But most of the time, it's sort of controlling obstructive apnea, but maybe not enough for full breathing normalization. Next up, Somnibalance. I have no experience with this machine, but is their automatic algorithm well balanced? Hmm. Not looking too bad, to be honest. They've really stuffed up again, like Fisher & Paykel during the wake period. It's up here at 14, when it really should be down here at four. So if you have this machine, set a nice ramp period to keep that pressure low while you're falling off to sleep. But once uh, we hit sleep, it's not too bad, really. You know, it does sort of mirror the blue line pretty well. Um, well, better than some of the others. So not too bad, a few little periods here where it's not controlling obstructive apneas here and here, but I don't know, I'd probably give that a pass mark. Next on the list, we have Lowenstein, or is it Lowenstein? I don't know, but the Germans are coming. This is the Prisma 20A, and I call it Darth Vader, but apparently you don't sound like Darth Vader. From what I'm told, it's the quietest machine ever. One of our Facebook moderators, Damien, G'day Damo, he's a biomedical engineer, 
and he works on these machines all the time. And he reckons this Prisma 20A is top notch. He reckons the build quality is excellent and the, the motor inside, some Swiss motor, bloody unreal he reckons. $200 for the motor alone. <laughs> Get that from this Swiss company. This whole machine here costs about 200 bucks. This machine's got a motor in it. The motor itself is 200 bucks. So I'll have to get one, play around with it, um, and see how it goes. Now the automatic algorithm surprised me a lot here as well. Stuffed up in the beginning during the wake period, like a few others up here at sort of 14 during wake. But once sleep arrives, check it out. Because this is the best so far. Hey, can you see it here? Very closely mirroring the blue line, normal breathing. A few little periods here where it's below the blue line, always above the red, so always controlling those obstructive apneas, which is fantastic. Pressure max was only 12. The ResMed was 18. Residual AHI 1.6, super low AHI. I mean, that's, if it wasn't for this little part in the beginning, which you can fix with a ramp, now that's, that's an A+. Plus. Really nice, good, stable algorithm. And Damien does say it's got a ridiculously good algorithm. So yeah, there you go, guys. That was a big surprise, the Lewenstein. Uh-oh, <laughs> here we go. Philips Respironics System 1. And if this doesn't make you change from your Philips machine, after everything you've been through over the last two years, nothing will. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Their automatic algorithm is shit. You need to change your machine to fix pressure mode because this is not fit for purpose. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so during the awake period, it shoots up, not too bad, similar to ResMed, whatever, but look at this here. So remember, you need to be above the red line to control your obstructive apneas, and it's not. It's well, well below the red line here, below the red line here, it's well below the red line here, and rarely does it reach breathing stability. Okay, a couple of tiny little spots. Residual AHI 10, overcome obstructive events, no overcome flow limitation, no fail. Big fail. Next up, Apex ICH Auto. And this sorta of looks a little bit similar to the BMC algorithm. Jumps up a bit in the beginning and it's sort of hovering between the red and the blue. Dipping below the red here and here. Um, up near the blue on a few occasions. Not great, not terrible. Somewhere in between. All right, everybody, pens down. That is the end of the final year exam. And the two standout students who aced their exam were Fisher and Paykel Icon and the Lowenstein Prisma 20A. But there can only be one winner, one best automatic. Hmm, deary me. The Fisher and Paykel provides a little bit better control. It's a little bit of a closer mirror to the blue line. However, it does reach a maximum pressure of 15.3 versus the Lowenstein of 12.1. That's a big difference. So the comfort is gonna be better. Oh man, decisions, decisions, decisions. You know what? I'm gonna go. But based on this bench test, this incredible ResMed funded study, that's gonna be my pick of the bunch. But both those machines, algorithms, spot on. So the take home message from today's video is this. Most of the automatic algorithms are fucking shit. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon, bye. G'day mates, this video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.